We have bought a glider on AliExpress for 24 euros. This glider has a wingspan of 1,210 millimeters. The wing area is 0.144 square meters. The wings have carbon fiber rods as reinforcement. The weight of the body with the cabin is 164 grams. The weight of the body without the cabin is 116 grams. To begin, we have joined the two half wings together in one piece and fixed them to the foam fuselage. In order to reinforce the foam body, we have purchased a carbon fiber rod in the decathlon store. The rod is 4 mm in diameter and 160 cm long. A piece of rod has been placed along the belly of the plane, and another piece has been introduced through the tip. This rod will be placed just under the battery. The battery, being the most massive object on the plane, usually breaks the nose of the foam body when a strong hit occurs, so a specific reinforcement is necessary for it. The elevator has been manufactured from a sheet of polystyrene foam. It has been sewn to the stabilizer in six points. It has a width of two centimeters. The ailerons have been cut from the wings. On the top, wooden sticks have been arranged to define the hinge line. In addition, strips of thick packing tape have been placed to fix the hinge. At the trailing edge, chopsticks have also been arranged to prevent the deformation of the ailerons. The nose has been hollowed out to build a battery bay. The bay is elongated, so that we can move the battery inside it for convenience. This led us to adjust the center of gravity by moving the battery along the bay. The motor has tilted 10 degrees downward, so that the thrust line passes through the first quarter of the wing cord, where the center of gravity is supposed to be. With this, we prevent the motor from generating a pitching moment down. The inclination of 10 degrees implies that, for every 100 grams of thrust, there is a downward vertical component of 17 grams. This vertical component opposes the lift force, and decreases the lift to drag ratio of the aircraft. Therefore, the angle should always be the smallest possible. However, a low inclination has the disadvantage of leaving little room for the propeller. We have placed a small APC propeller with two blades and five inches in diameter. To accommodate the propeller, we have cut and removed part of the fuselage. Under this section, a reinforcement with wooden sticks that rests on the carbon fiber rod has been arranged, in order to provide material continuity to the two foam sections on both sides of the cut. Servo connections are made using 1.2 mm diameter wire reinforced with wooden sticks, which are fixed to the wire using sewing thread and cyanoacrylate glue. This prevents the buckling of the rods. It uses a battery of 3 cells and 1,800 milliamps per hour. A 40 amp ESC. 3 servos weighing 9 grams. A Flysky receiver FSIA6. This first version weighs 507 grams. The motor is a Racer Star BR2212 with a velocity constant of 2450. This motor pushes 815 grams with a 6x3 inch propeller. With the 5 inch propeller we are using, we estimate that the thrust will approach 700 grams. This means that the thrust to weight ratio is greater than 1. The wing loading is 3.52 kilograms per square meter. In the first tests, we have noticed an exaggerated buckling in the wings. It is also noticed that there is a great pitch down moment, so that the center of gravity has to be backward, almost in the middle of the cord wing. Finally, we note that due to the large wingspan, the moment of inertia with respect to the longitudinal axis is very high and the plane cannot roll easily. Master Ricky, from the Aero Modeling Club of Nurja, performs the flight tests. In the new version, the buckling of the wings has been corrected by removing the original rods and placing a single 4 mm diameter carbon fiber rod. The rolling problems have been corrected by adding a rudder to the plane and coordinating the ailerons and the rudder movement in the transmitter, so that they work in coordination to turn the glider. The weight of this new version is 522 grams. The center of gravity is 7 centimeters from the leading edge of the wing, which corresponds to 54% of the wing cord. That is, it is behind the middle of the wing. 
and this position is achieved applying an excessive upward angle at the elevator. This indicates that if we remove the elevator angle, the center of gravity could be moved backward. This aerodynamic setup is quite atypical. However, before proceeding to the motorization, we forget to check which the right position of the center of gravity was. This should be done to prevent an accidentally modification of the geometry of the glider. We suspect that either by placing the longitudinal carbon fiber rod, or by making the hole in the fuselage to accommodate the propeller, we have tensioned the tail back so that the horizontal stabilizer has lost the original decalage. The decalage is the angle of the horizontal stabilizer with respect to the main wing. We have placed a 2.5 mm diameter carbon fiber rod on the trailing edge of the wing and we have anchored the tail to the rod. Thus, we prevent the plane from buckling longitudinally, and set a constant decalage. Next, we check using plasticine how much is the necessary weight placed in the most advanced part of the nose that would leave the center of gravity in the middle of the wing. To do this, we move the ESC forward so that its moment is the greatest possible. This weight is 106 grams. Therefore, we changed the battery and placed a new battery of 1500 milliamps per hour with a weight of 115 grams. The battery change represents a saving of 31 grams and leaves the plane with a total weight of 491 grams and a wing loading of 3.4 kilograms per square meter. In the latest tests, we noticed that applying a small decalage the glider no longer needs an angle in the elevator. The center of gravity has been placed just in the middle of the wing. We could continue increasing the decalage angle in order to move the center of gravity forward. However, applying more angle increases the drag force created by the tail, and decreases the lift to drag ratio of the aircraft, which implies a higher stall speed, and a shorter flight time. Since we do not observe defects in the dynamic behavior of the plane, we have decided to leave the center of gravity where it is. The motor is underpowered with the 5-inch two-blade propeller. The recommended propeller for this motor is a 6-inch two-blade one. If more power is required, you can mount a 5-inch three-blade propeller. It is also recommended to reinforce the fuselage with a carbon fiber rod of 6 mm in diameter, as the 4 mm rod is buckling more than convenient. Master Fernan, from the Aero Modeling Club of Nurja, performs the last flight tests. And this is all, thanks. No, ni tagar, no, va a un tapón para arriba. Vale, 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 es la batería. La batería de 1500 que tengo está, está, la he jodido, le pegué un porrazo y la he jodido. Entonces va bien, ¿no? Sí. Vale, 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 vale. Me da un frenero. Me da muy bien. ¿Vela bien? Te voy a poner más, más timón atrás de, de profundidad, ¿no? Pues tú no lo veo bien, dobla bastante bien. Dobla porque está coordinado. ¿Por qué le he puesto con la cola coordinada? Y le hace una mezcla, dale, no un timón. Sí. Se va muy cable. Va, voy a estar dejar así. Esa es la batería. Entonces. Sí, sí va bien, sí va bien. Es de la batería. Que o me la, o me la tengo descargada o, o se ha jodido. Creo que se ha jodido. ¿Me baja, vale? Vale. Ah, mas tá isso aqui?